We actually sent Glenn to see the chief of radiology at the Medical Imaging Center of Southern California, Dr. Bradley Jabor, to help get some answers. If you had a magic wand and you could fix one thing, what would that be? Memory and confusion. When people get to the 50 to 60 range, it's not uncommon to start developing slight forgetfulness. Some of that is, is nothing to worry about, and some of that may be a early indication that you're developing a brain degenerative disorder. The first thing we, we, we try and do is the neurocognitive testing. The next thing would be a PET CT scanner using an isotope called FDG. We've injected the FDG isotope, which goes to the areas of the brain that are active. And red represents good metabolism. What we're going to do now is measure the wires connecting the various different hubs or servers in the brain. So on this flare image of his brain, we have all these white spots that represent little scars from things like hypertension. We're going to analyze and we'll have an idea whether this is a vascular kind of problem or an Alzheimer's problem. The next thing we do is a morphologic MRI. Because in Alzheimer's, there's a pattern of shrinkage in certain areas of the brain. But what we can see now is that he's got too much space it looks like it does have atrophy. We will then measure that by comparing the volume of his brain to a normal database for his age. So on the volumetric study, the good news is that he is within acceptable range for atrophy for his age. Then I have some good news and I have some bad news. We can see that these spaces are a little prominent. We looked at the wiring in the brain and we see you've got all these little scars. This is because you either have high blood pressure or you're borderline diabetic and you're not looking after yourself. You've got some serious thinking to do because that's a silent killer, high blood pressure. At this point, I don't believe is irreversible. We're just happy that we can report to you you don't have Alzheimer's disease. That's okay. fantastic. Thank you. My pleasure. I feel so relieved. Yeah, Certainly an important diagnostic tool in determining the etiology of dementia. And I feel like we're at a place with Alzheimer's disease where we're, we're getting better at diagnoses. We still have a long ways to go in terms of medical treatment, but there's a silver lining in all this. For you, Glenn, and for anyone at home watching, which is, you mentioned lifestyle. There's so much we can do in our day-to-day -day lives to preserve our brain function. And in a lot of ways, it's the things we always talk about on our show, which is, First and foremost, let food be your medicine. And the foods we're eating are either poisoning our brain or supporting our brain by decreasing inflammation. I know you talked with Glenn about mm -hmm. that because you did see some of the age-related yeah. atrophy. Yeah, and, and really think of a room. You have in this room air conditioning and you have things that create a good environment. The body is the same. We have a regulatory mechanism in the body to clean out the toxins, to keep things in balance. And so when the metabolic effects of liver, spleen, kidney, add to a diet, go out of balance, you end up with the four big risk factors for brain health. That is high blood pressure, borderline diabetes, cholesterol buildup, and cortisol from stress. Those four have, play havoc on the brain and the heart. And if you can control those risk factors, yeah. you can decrease your risk factors for Alzheimer's. Yeah. Glenn, I'm curious with you, because I heard through the grapevine you've already made well, a few changes. Yes. The next morning I woke up and I got a juicer. It was like a juicer, like, you know, a lot of kale, please. My God, give Kale's me a cheese. good stuff. <laughs> well, cheeseburgers are better. <laughs> but, you know, I went out and got this juicer the next morning at 7 o'clock, you know, this, and, and all these carrots and kale, and I mean, and I have to tell you something. It's good. Okay. It's really good. I put a little apple in there, just a little, because uh, I've got to worry about the diabetes side of it just to give me a little uh, just sugar. Luckily and for you, apples are very high in fiber, my friend. That was a really good choice. Well, thank you. And um, That juicer was a good choice. I'm impressed. The juicer is great. And I have more energy. I've stopped. I've stopped all of that. And I don't miss it right now. Well, good for you. And I, I miss it. So, Glenn, a couple things. And I've, and I've lost six pounds. And that was oh, I, know, I know you were talking to our producers about how excited you are to go on this journey of improved health. I'm going to give you a copy of my new book, and we're going to yeah. make ourselves a resource to you. Thank you. Because you're going to learn and change the way you eat. And for the record, it doesn't all have to be carrots and green vegetables. Those are great, but you can also eat other wonderful Terrific. things to Thank decrease you. inflammation in your body, improve your health.